Hey, welcome to Riverside Reptiles Education Center. My name is Brian Kleiman. I am the owner. We are Connecticut's only reptile and amphibian zoo. We have over 13,000 square feet of dedicated space to many different species of reptiles and amphibians from around the world. We just added an additional 4,000 square feet of outdoor habitat called Turtle Haven, where you can come and see different species of turtles and tortoises. We are open right now from Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 4, and we're located at 132 South Road here in Enfield, Connecticut. I'm here today to talk about snakes. Now, there are 14 species of snakes here in Connecticut, and I get calls and emails and texts all the time with people saying that they've seen a specific species in their yards. Most often, it's a copperhead. Every snake here in Connecticut, if they don't know a lot about snakes, it's a copperhead. So we're gonna meet a couple snakes today that are most commonly mistaken for copperheads, and then we're gonna meet the real deal. We're gonna meet an Eastern copperhead. So. Come with me, let's go check them out. Today we are going to look at some snakes that are most often mistaken for copperheads. Uh, in Connecticut there are 14 species of snakes and being a local snake expert I get calls, I get emails, text messages, you name it from everybody around Connecticut wanting me to identify uh, a snake in their yard or a snake that they saw. And many times, especially on many uh, Facebook posts, um, they think it's a copperhead. You know, a lot of people that don't know a lot about snakes think every snake is a copperhead here in Connecticut. Um, so let's look at some snakes that kind of look like copperheads and then we'll meet the real thing at the end. So let's get started. We're going to start with this. Beautiful little snake right here. So this is an eastern milk snake. And eastern milk snakes are found pretty much throughout the entire state of Connecticut and very common throughout most of New England. They are non-venomous, they are constrictors, that's how they kill their prey. And they are most active, especially in the summer, um, at dusk and dawn, they're called crepuscular. So crepuscular animals are most active at dusk and dawn. Um, and they're kind of a secretive snake. So you might even have these snakes living in your yard or around your house, you might not even know it. But the way to identify milk snakes is very easy. You can see that this snake has all these blotches on it. Now this snake is about to go and shed pretty soon, so it's a little bit duller than it usually is. But they have these blotches or bands on their body. And they can be uh, brown, they can be reddish brown, and in very young individuals, sometimes they're almost like a bright brick red. But these blotches, whether, whether they're brown or red, they're always surrounded, they always have a black outline around them. So you can see every single blotch on the snake has a black outline. That is a great way to identify an eastern milk snakes from other snakes. Another great key feature of eastern milk snakes is if you look on top of their head, inside their first band or blotch, they usually have the letter Y or the letter V. So this individual, she's kind of unique. She's got a kind of a weird looking uh, V, but you can see 
It's right there in the middle of her head. So milk snakes, like all snakes, are carnivores. They all eat meat. These snakes are excellent mousers. In fact, they'll follow mouse trails. So when a mouse makes a trail into your house, um, the trail is actually, it's kind of gross. Um, it, it's urine. So a mouse pees, that's how they mark their trail. So these guys are awesome at picking up those scent trails and they'll follow a mouse. And unfortunately, sometimes when a mouse goes into your basement or into your log pile or into your garage, these snakes will follow them. They'll find the mice, they'll eat the mice. They're great at raiding mouse nests as well. So they're great for pest control. Unfortunately, sometimes they end up in your basement, but they always pretty much find their way out. They just follow the trail back out into the wild. So here's another great look at Eastern milk snake. All right, so our next snake, although I put him in a venomous bucket, not a venomous snake. But another extremely common snake here in Connecticut and very commonly mistaken for a copperhead. Maybe you might recognize this guy. This is a northern water snake. Now, northern water snakes are found all over Connecticut, New England, just like milk snakes, extremely common snake. They're often associated with wetlands, rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, swamps, um, but sometimes you can find them pretty far away from water. Um, I've found them in the middle of fields before you know, a mile or two away from any main water source. So water snakes, the best way to identify them is if you look at their face, and if you look at the upper and lower scales, you can see there's a dark line in between each one of them and their mouths almost look like they're stitched shut. That is a great indicator for the species. Also, if you're looking at the snake's head, you'll also notice that its eyes are near the end of its nose and kind of positioned to the top of its head. This is a unique adaptation that water snakes have, kind of similar to crocodiles and alligators, that they have their eyes on top of their head so they can peek out of the water without exposing their entire body. So they'll kind of periscope out of the water to look around, they'll flick their tongues to get uh, some smells, and then they'll go back underneath water and continue to stalk their prey. Or if it's a predator, they'll go underwater and hide. So a lot of people think if a snake has a diamond shaped head, it can be a dangerous snake. And that's kind of partially true. Some snakes, like rattlesnakes and copperheads, um, they kind of have a triangular shaped head. They have venom glands behind their eyes. It kind of makes their head triangular shaped. So um, non-venomous snakes, like water snakes, garter snakes, when they feel threatened, they'll flatten out their heads and their heads can kind of be triangular shaped. They kind of look like a venomous snake, although they are not venomous. Hognose snakes, Eastern hognose snakes, which is a, a protected species here in Connecticut, um, they have very triangular heads, uh, but they are non-venomous. So you can't always rely on head shape to determine if a snake is venomous or not. Um, so whether you see a water snake in the wild or whether you see uh, a copperhead, the best rule is just leave it alone. Uh, whether it's a venomous snake or a non-venomous snake or even know what kind of species of snake it is, watch it, enjoy it. Please don't hurt it. When you're done looking at it, just walk around it. Take a picture of it. Send it to me. I'll be more than happy to identify it for you. So here's another great look at northern water snakes. These guys primarily feed on fish and frogs. And they are great swimmers. Now quite often I'll get approached by someone who swears that they've seen cotton mouths here in Connecticut. Uh, cotton mouths, also known as water moccasins, are a venomous species of pit viper. Uh, you can find them down south. In fact, their northernmost range is uh, southeastern Virginia. That's as far north as they come. They go down all the way to Florida, all the way out west to Texas and Oklahoma. Um, very common down there. Here in Connecticut, there are no cotton mouths. I've, people have argued with me until they're blue in the face that they've seen six foot co cotton mouths in a lake uh, here in Connecticut. Uh, what they're seeing are water snakes, our northern water snakes. They're similar in that they're both, uh, they can get kind of large, 
you know, a, water, a big water snake can kind of get close to four feet long, a big female. They're thick bodied snakes. They got roughly keeled scales, just like a cotton mouse. So superficially, they kind of resemble a cotton mouse. But there are no cotton mouse in Connecticut. Just northern water snakes. All right, so we looked at the eastern milk snake. We know how to identify that. They have reddish brown or brown blotches with a black outline around them. Pretty easy, right? And then we have northern water snakes. They kind of have like a bug-eyed appearance uh, and the, the scales around the mouths have the dark lines in between them. So their mouths kind of look like they've been stitched together. Um, two great ways to identify those snakes. Now we are going to look at a northern copperhead, um, which has actually been changed to the eastern copperhead. They've been taxonomically lumped together, the southern and the northern, and the broadbanded have all been lumped together to the eastern copperhead. So that's what we have here in Connecticut. So, let's see if she's ready to come out. Obviously, I'm using a snake hook to hold the snake. Um, and before I continue on this, I might want to also add that uh, don't try this at home. Don't handle snakes, especially venomous snakes, um, unless you're a professional, unless you know what you're doing. Because copperheads, although, although their venom isn't you know, that high on a toxicity scale, um, it is dangerous uh, and it would definitely ruin your day if you happen to get bit by But here she is. So here is an Eastern copperhead. So we're gonna put her on the ground so she feels more comfortable. Melina is trusting me with her life right now. <laughs> so, the best way to identify copperheads, they're absolutely a gorgeous snake. So they have their many shades of brown, um, but they're browns. Um, and the head, if you look at her head, it's the color of a penny, hence the name copperhead. Uh, very coppery colored. And you also notice that there's no pattern on their head. Um, sometimes they have, you can see there's two little tiny dark spots. Uh, but many times their head has no pattern. It's just a solid uh, color, like a coppery color, uh, but it can vary. So the best way to tell copperheads from other snakes is look at the banding. You see each one of these bands right here? They're horizontal bands. They're shaped like an hourglass. So they have horizontally shaped hourglass shaped bands going across their body. Um, some people say they look like two Hershey Kisses kind of coming together as well. So that's actually the best way to tell a copperhead from other snakes. Uh, they, because again, they come in a lot of different shades, a lot of different types of browns, but they all have that hourglass band going across their back. Now copperheads in Connecticut and in Massachusetts are very habitat specific. They only like certain types of habitat. Whereas you would go down south, you can park on the side of the road and flip a piece of tin or plywood and possibly find a copperhead under that. Um, it doesn't work as easily here in Connecticut. Um, they prefer basalt ridges, trap rock ridges um, that are surrounded by wetlands and fields. That's ideal copperhead habitat. Um, so the ridge line that runs west of the Connecticut River if you go up and down 91, you see the trap rock basalt ridges. That's the type of habitat I'm talking about. So quite often, people don't come in contact with copperheads. They live in unaccessible areas that people usually don't go to. And occasionally, people will run into them on hiking trails, but they're typically uh, a pretty laid back snake. They will not bite unless you physically pick one up and try to catch it or kill it or if you step on one. Um, those are the only two times a copperhead is really inclined to bite. Um, in Connecticut, there are fairly few bites of copperheads every year, although it does happen, um, but they're not fatal. There's only been about five deaths attributed to copperhead. So this copperhead comes with kind of a unique story. I got a call many years ago, it's probably, this snake's probably about 12 years old, 10 or 12 years old by now. Um, two copperheads were in someone's yard. And it's very unique for me to actually get a call about a copperhead in Connecticut, because again, they're not 
that common of a snake. So I got a call, there was two copperheads hanging out at someone's house. They sent me pictures, so I knew they were copperheads. Um, so I went to go move them because they were right near a driveway. Um, this couple had grandkids and dogs. And I did, of course, I didn't want them to get hurt and I didn't want the snakes to get hurt. So I went and caught both of these snakes. Um, I brought them home for a couple days because it, it, I didn't know exactly where to release them. I didn't know how close their den site was. I had to do some research. Um, but while in captivity, one of those snakes gave birth to 13 babies and they were born alive. They're ovivivorous. So the babies developed inside the moms um, and thin membranes and they're essentially born alive. Um, so she had 13 baby copperheads. Uh, so I released all of them except uh, two of them. So here's one of them right here. I kept them for educational purposes and um, now we can come visit them here at my center, Riverside Reptiles Education Center. One of my favorite snakes. I absolutely love to see copperheads in the wild. So a lot of people so you can identify a venomous snake here in Connecticut by just looking at their eyes. Number one, you gotta get pretty close to the snake's face to see whether they have round pupils or elliptical pupils, which I don't recommend, especially if the snake might be venomous. Um, and two, if you look at her eyes right now, we're in a very lighted area, um, her elliptical pupils pretty much look round. They don't look elliptical. So although they do have vertical pupils, it's not a good way to identify venomous snakes from non-venomous snakes. And to bring this one step further, um, coral snakes are very venomous. You can find them in Florida and Georgia um, and down over Texas, Arizona. Uh, they're a member of the Elapid family. They're related to cobras. They have round pupils. Uh, cobras, they have round pupils. Many species of venomous snakes uh, deadly venomous snakes, including king cobras, um, have round pupils. Uh, so going by the shape of the snake's pupil is not the best way to identify if a snake is venomous or non-venomous. And vice versa, there are some non-venomous species of snakes that have elliptical pupils as well. Thanks for watching the video. Please stay tuned for more videos to come. Riverside Reptiles Education Center is located at 132 South Road in Enfield, Connecticut. So Zeus and I are here to say thank you and come visit us soon.